In this video, we're going to learn how to look at a big amount of data row by row or column by column. I have a large data set here. It's, a, um, it's actually about 200 elements long if you go down to the very bottom, and it is uh, five columns long as well. And all I'm going to show you today is how to use the colon to access an entire row or an entire column of the data. And to do that, the first thing I have to do is uh, DLM read it. So this is what I have here. So here's my data going back to MATLAB. Um, I have dat equals DLM read large data dot text. And again, that just brings everything in right away. And uh, let's sorry, let's take a look. So let's see what happens if I were to just run it uh, as it is. And it goes ahead, big file read, and it reads in all my data, which is exactly what I expect. OK. So now let's say that what I want is, uh, well, first of all, to transpose the data. So let's learn how to transpose first, uh, because we're, today we're going to be working a lot with rows and columns. And uh, if it makes more sense to access a column than a row or whatever it happens to be, uh, you should be able to transpose as well. So if you remember in uh, linear algebra, transposition was just to take the columns and the rows and swap them, or basically put the matrix on its side. In MATLAB, we can do that using just a single apostrophe, a single quote. It's really handy. So if I say, uh, you know, dat transpose equals to dat with a single quote right after it, then what I'm going to get is a transposed version of dat. And uh, let's give it a run. We're going to see a bunch of data. So we're going to do it with a smaller matrix. I just want to show you that it works. And so now it's a, an entirely different thing that is a column matrix. So let's do it here. Let's take a look at uh, something we might be able to understand a little bit more. I'm going to clear my screen. And uh, let's make a random matrix, first of all, of 3 by 3. So it's just a random 3 by 3 matrix. And amazingly, MATLAB has some functionality for that. So say R matrix equals to rand 3 colon 3, or sorry, 3 comma 3. And that's going to give me a random matrix of, uh, here, let's make a 3 by 2 just so the transpose makes more sense. And this is a random matrix vectors of uh, three rows and two columns, as we asked. And if I want to see a transpose, I will do rmt, rm transpose, equals rm uh, with a single quote at the end. And what I end up with is exactly the transpose of the matrix, where the columns have become rows and the rows have become columns. So if you're wondering, that's how you do that. Uh, it is sometimes very useful to do so. OK. So there are problems here. I have, uh, you know, in, in large data.txt, I have a huge amount of data. But let's say I'm just curious about the seventh row of the data, for example. So that's, uh, I need to search for it and I need to find it. In order to get that out of MATLAB, I use the colon operator as appropriate. And watch how I do that. So I say, you know, dat seventh, perhaps, equals to, and I want the seventh row of the data and every single column in that data. So how we will write that is dat. 7, because the row will come first. So I'm specifying 7th row, comma, all is how we're going to read that, which is a, a colon. So the colon does a lot in MATLAB. It's very context specific. And what this says is give me the 7th row, all of the columns. And let's run that. And what we're going to see is dat 7th. Let's go back to our original data. And if we take a look, the 7th row starts with 0. 93983, which is what we have here. MATLAB is rounding at the moment, and all the way down to uh, 0.41-ish, and we get 0.41-ish there. So this is great. Uh, we can access this. And then this is just a vector. We can do a bunch of stuff to it. So let's say I want to sum all the values in the, uh, the third column, for example. I might say, you know, sum of third equals to sum of dat. Now, a column is accessed the opposite way. So it's all of the rows, comma, three for the third column. And uh, we can go ahead and run that. And uh, you can trust me, that's what the sum is, or you can compute it on your own. Uh, but that's how MATLAB is accessing. In this case, uh, we're looking at uh, the seventh row and all the columns. And in this case, we're looking at the third column, all the rows. Now, as before, we can access individual elements. Remember, it is just a vector. So this col uh, colon here says, give me anything you want. Uh, but let's say I just want from element 2 to element number 10. I can specify that as well. And this goes back to what we did in the last video. Uh, so let's call it, I guess, restricted uh, third. And that's going to become dat from element 2 to 10, 3. And so I can give it any index vectors I want, anything like that, I can do that. Um, and I can even specify here if I really wanted to. Let's say I want 3 to 4. So I want a 3 to the 4th uh, column and 2 to 10th row. And what that's going to give me is a, is a matrix, which, as we can expect, is going to be pretty big. But this is what I'm ending up with. 
So this is how we might access this, and uh, using things like sum or mean or whatever it is, whenever you restrict to a particular row or column, you basically get a vector back out again. So anything you can do to vectors, you can do to these restricted versions. Um, sometimes, and, and normally, honestly, if I'm going to be doing this, what I like to do is what I did here on line 7, uh, which is to so, uh, store this in some new variable. Uh, so let's say that, uh, sorry, line 5, uh, so dat 7th equals to data at 7th row all, and then uh, maybe if I want the sum of that, I would say sum of dat 7th. So rather than sort of having it like I do now in, in my line 9, so a sum of the data of all the rows in third column, it gets a little bit confusing, especially if you have a, a number of nested function calls. And so uh, what I would like to do there is to store it as a different variable and access it there and, and work with it there. You don't have to, I just find it a lot easier to organize my code. And that is how you access everything you would, might need to in MATLAB if you have some uh, really clever ways of accessing the vectors. You can do some pretty amazing things with vectorized code.